We're in God's presence. Oh, as we worship God, sing praises unto His name, have you noticed how your expectations, they rise, they get up. We're expecting good things. Something good is about to happen in our lives because we're in God's presence and God's such a giver. God wants to give you life right now. He wants to encourage you and He wants to unfold revelation for you for the great days ahead. So let's call on him right now. Precious Lord, we call on you in your presence. We ask you, Lord, for more, more of your grace, more wisdom and understanding, and reveal, Lord, the great paths that you have for us. Lord, as we focus on your word, we pray that you unfold the treasure map of your blessing, and Lord, lead us every step of the way. Your law is a light, a lamp under our feet right now. We believe we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. United Part 2, United Part 2, and we're going to talk about United in Heart. Let's just do a quick review, though. In Part 1, we read a great story out of the Genesis 11 about the Tower of Babel. We learned that being united makes extraordinary power and unlimited potential available to each one of us. But we also learn that there is a good unity and there is a bad unity. Evil alliances. The difference is the core values that steer the results. God's hand is moved to make supernatural results happen when we are united in Him. But that begs the question, around what? Jesus said in Matthew 18, verse 19, he said, if two of you will agree on earth concerning anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. This is Jesus talking. Remember, 1 Peter 5 says that the devil, he goes about like a lion looking for whom he may devour. He cannot defeat you, but you can defeat yourself if you take his bait. His strategy is to use division, to isolate you, to make you vulnerable. We want you blessed, covered, healed, joy-filled, understanding God's word for your life, walking with hope and faith in your heart so that you can live life strong. That's God's plan for you. So let's dig into part two, united in heart. This is personal unity we're talking about, united in heart. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the famous writer and poet of the 19th century, said this, The reason why the world lacks unity and lies broken and in heaps is because man is disunited within himself. I think Mr. Emerson felt the weight of that experience personally. Little Andrew, he had a similar take on life as he sat at the table and his mom was telling him to eat his dinner. He frowned and he said, Salad is just ruining my life. <laughs> ah, the brokenness of humanity. <laughs> In this very important installment, part two of this series on being united, I want to take you to the critical aspect or perspective of your own personal state of being united. It's critical because your inner reality always becomes your outer reality. The invisible has power and ability to manifest. Jesus said, what's hidden will be made manifest. Now that goes for whatever's good or whatever's bad. Invisible stuff becomes visible stuff. That's why Jesus told us, Matthew 6, to pray in secret, give in secret, to love and forgive in secret. Why? Because hidden stuff is planted stuff, and therefore it has the power to grow and multiply. But that also applies to crazy stuff, right? That's why we need God's help, Jesus' blood, to deal with the sin, the iniquity, the fractures, and the brokenness, the bitterness of life, our own broken experiences. What doesn't get repaired gets repeated, but at a new amplified and multiplied level. Falling off your chair hurts, right? But falling from a 20-story penthouse balcony, it'll kill you. Don't lust after promotion if 
you've promoted lust in your heart and mind. There was a nationally popular leader in the early 2000s who was a top-selling author and communicator, but he had not dealt with the fractures he had hidden away in his heart. Why was everyone shocked when he fell, when he imploded? Why are we shocked when the invisible overtakes the visible, when the seed sown suddenly grows overnight and produces? The idea of promoting unity is such a global theme right now. It's got cultural horsepower and universal acceptance to be any kind of ambassador for unity. After all, unity is the panacea. Here's the bottom line, though. You can only give what you have. You can talk unity, but if you're fractured internally, you're really an agent of division. Even when you're buzzing the, the talking points of unity on Facebook, you can't help it. You're divided, so you unconsciously try to divide until it even seems like it's your personal ministry. Have you ever seen that? But I've got good news for you. Good news. God wants to heal you, repair you, and unite your heart so you can lecture others on unity that you don't have or learn from the giver of all life. Psalm 86 verse 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk and live in your truth. Direct, and listen to this, and unite my heart solely, reverently, to fear and honor your name. It starts with sound teaching. The ecclesia of Christ should teach anointed, root-growing, wall-building, roof-covering, protective, blessed truth, promoting God's way, God's kingdom. Ask yourself this. Are you whole right now? Are you intact? Do you feel together? Are you personally unified, complete? After an accident or a traumatic event, you hear questions like, are you okay? Are you all right? Sometimes adults who were traumatized as children, they don't even realize that they're still fractured and broken. The trauma is such a constant part of their life that they begin to normalize it. Broken becomes normal just the way it is. You've heard people say, I feel like I'm falling apart. I'm cracking up. My heart is broken. Some are even diagnosed with split personality or multiple personality disorder. You might be a little bit like this woman, Janice, who once said, I stress about stress before there's even stress to stress about. Then I stress about stressing over stress that doesn't need to be stressed about. It's so stressful. <laughs> that confession right there might be an admission that you are falling apart on the inside. You can have a brand new car that looks like it's working perfectly, but when you get a chance to look under the hood and see that everything is unhooked, disconnected, I don't have to be a car expert to know that no matter how put together that car looks, it's not going anywhere. It's not right. It needs fixing. We shouldn't judge by the optics. Man looks on the outside, but God looks on the heart. There was a humorous financial planning commercial a few years ago with a young club DJ, and he had long dreadlocks, a biker beard, and street clothes. They cut off his long hair, shaved his beard, put an expensive suit on him, and placed him in an office as a qualified financial advisor, giving retirement advice to clients. He memorized some investment jargon, and because of the context, clients took him serious. They really did. The bottom line being communicated is this. Appearances can be deceitful. Make sure you have a certified, trained, qualified advisor. In other words, what's really under the hood, my friend? What's under the hood? What's going on in the hidden place of your heart? 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. God sees the secret places of your life, my friend. Never to shame you, though, but with the intent to heal, to repair, and to help you. My friend, if you were to look under your hood, are you disconnected, fragmented, unhooked? 
And if you are, get excited because God is the master human mechanic. God is able to make you entire, connected, whole, tuned up. He is able to unite your heart again so it's back to his manufacturer's standard of perfection. God is the original human engineer. Your design, your identity demands a purpose for living, to receive, to grow, to give. A cherry tree receives sunlight, nutrients, but that's not who it is. It grows roots, branches, leaves, but that's still not who it is. It gives fruit, cherries, still that's not who it is, but it's its purpose supported by its true identity. It receives, grows, and gives because purpose supports its true identity, but never replaces it. It can't be replaced. If you're not fulfilling your true purpose, you live disconnected from your real identity. It doesn't mean that God doesn't fully love you though. Oh no, God dearly, dearly loves you and he values you. Jesus said this in John 14 verse one, do not let your hearts be troubled, afraid. Believe confidently in God and trust in Him. Have faith, hold on to it, rely on it. Keep going and believe also in me, he said. If you find yourself troubled, afraid, even just uneasy and lacking confidence, that's a symptom of not having your believer and truster properly connected under the hood. You're misfiring. You might even be backfiring as you drive through life. It doesn't sound pretty, does it? You may be on social media talking like a hair on fire panic soul and it's all because you're not personally united. Your soul is disconnected. It's backfiring. Don't be ashamed. Don't be discouraged. Even if you said something crazy and wish that you could take it back, you truly are designed in the image of God. You're made to win. You're born to win and you, you just need to allow the Holy Spirit access to your heart right now. He'll do soul surgery on the inside of you. Hey, even the most amazing, expensive sports car in the world would be able to go nowhere if you unhooked all the great connections, the unity of its parts. Personal unity is essential to operating fully at your design's potential. Simply put, you cannot fulfill your God-given design and purpose without being personally united in heart united in heart. Psalm 86, verse 11. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may walk and live in your truth. Direct and unite my heart solely, reverently, to fear and honor your name. I've prayed that prayer many times. It's powerful. King David, the psalmist, went on in verse 12. And he said this, O Lord, my God, with my whole united heart, I will glorify your name forever. You see, we can't truly glorify God with half a heart, unhooked, fragmented. Why? Because it's not working. It's just not working. That's why 3 John 2 says, I wish that you would prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Your life must unite, correlate. Did you know that your inner reality becomes your outer reality. You heard me say that already, but do you realize your inner reality becomes your outer reality? When you're disconnected in heart, lacking personal unity of soul, you can't effectively unite with the rest of God's family. Oh, sure, you're loved. You're just ineffective. You're stalled. Your life is up on the blocks. You may, you may find yourself on social media along with other hair on fire people if you find yourself in a coalition of accusation instead of a forum of praise. Well, your life needs to be reconnected. You need Holy Spirit to unite your heart and soul. Look here at the extreme possibilities available to us when we are united with God's Spirit. Ephesians 6, verse 10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him, that strength which His boundless might provides. And see, now you're firing on all cylinders, connected up to God like this with a united heart. Because you know your inner reality becomes your outer reality, you can't be patient with your own disconnection. You must seize the moment and allow God to unite your heart. 
A young Nigerian math teacher named Michael Thomas was crippled, needing crutches to help him stand. When he first started, his students would mock him. He was hurt, but he chose to help them receive to grow, and he helped them give attention to the gift of math. Michael united that class around a message of respect and love. They became better people, and they all came to deeply, deeply love and adore and value Michael as their mentor. If you find yourself in the right assignment but unable to connect, you're not being rejected necessarily. The problem is internal. You're internally unhooked, fragmented, and your inner reality is forcing, yes, steering your outcome. Is that fixable? Absolutely. But not by changing the outer circumstances. No. That's the enemy's tactic against you. Blame the world around you. Blame the people, the politics, the economy, the system, man. It's the system that's all against me. 1 John 4 verse 4 says, Greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Say no to blame, but do take responsibility. Now, that doesn't mean that you're assigned to evil people. To forgive, yes. To waste time, no, never. Always remember, you put the right seed into the right ground. Even the father of the prodigal son didn't sow emails or Christmas gift baskets into a boy wasting his life and his inheritance, did he? Tough love? No, no. Unfailing love? Absolutely. It was resurrecting family love. And there was outcome. Romans 15 verse 6 says this, that together you may unanimously with united hearts, there we are with the united hearts again, and one voice praise and glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. We can't be united together if we're not first personally united to Christ and his core principles. We have a habit of uniting our voices in song with completely disconnected hearts. The one voice, one praise the apostle was calling for occurred because of a united heart. Friends, we've got to be united in heart, personally. The world settles for a form of unity in spite of beliefs. God honors unity based on true belief. Having your kids see it your way does not unite their hearts, does it? It produces temporary results Having your kids see it God's way, it unites their heart because it aligns with God's standard for life. Is it possible to lose a quality relationship with your children if you pursue unity based on your family's traditions, family rules, instead of God's standards and family name? Sadly, yes, absolutely. No matter how good your family standards are, they will not unite a child's heart and make it work to its fullest potential. You need God's supernatural standard for unity. If you play the short game with your family, with your marriage, I can guarantee you this, you will lose and lose big. If you point your children in the direction of God's standard though, then he will take responsibility for the fine work of uniting each individual heart for living, for life, for living life strong. Don't you want that? God involved with uniting your heart personally and your family? Don't you want that? Don't push religion or traditions on your children, folks. Don't push it on your marriage. Don't do that. First, be personally united in heart. You do that by receiving the work of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Then secondly, you personally grow in unity of heart by submitting to the process of growth, right? Third, you give. Third is when you give. According to God's standard, you put the right seed into the right ground. If you can't show your child what to do, then don't tell them what to do. Don't give advice that you're not living out personally. Give attention, give heed, give mercy, give forgiveness, love, kindness, give of your talent, your resources, but give the right seed into the right ground. Very, very important. 
let me conclude with this. Don't believe your fractures or the brokenness have the final say in your life. Don't believe that. One of the worst things that you can do is diagnose yourself as broken, fractured beyond repair, and then conclude, therefore, that you're worthless or just good for nothing but being bad. Good for nothing but the junk heap. That's a lie. That's a lie from hell. As you examine the scriptures and lives of so many heroes of faith, their particular brokenness and fractured soul was a major clue to their assignment, their God assignment. Abraham was an idolater who worshiped the stars. God makes him the father of faith. His wife, Sarah, is hopeless and hard and barren. God calls her to be the mother of his God-given nation. Joseph is the rejected younger brother and slave. He becomes prince and leader of the world. Rahab, she's a prostitute in Jericho. God makes her a hero and the great-great-grandmother of Jesus. How about Esther? She is an obscure Jewish orphan in captivity. God destines her to be the queen of Persia. Gideon, who is the least of the least of the least in his house and becomes the greatest valiant warrior. Paul the apostle starts out torturing the church and he becomes a builder and a martyr for the church. Satan likes to wound you where he thinks you'll be effective in defeating him. So why does God use your brokenness? God's able to turn the curse into a blessing. He turns the curse into a blessing because he loves you. 1 Corinthians 1, starting at verse 27. But God has selected for his purpose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, revealing their ignorance. And God has selected for his purpose the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, revealing their frailty. And God also selected, deliberately chose what in the world is lowborn and insignificant and branded and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing that he might depose and bring to nothing the things that are, so that no mortal man should have pretense for glorying and boast in the presence of God. Consider your assignment now. You're called to greatness as a child of God. I know that and I believe it. Oh, but Pastor Stephen, I just struggle with this and I struggle with that. Well, let's say that you struggle with lying and being deceitful. I know this, you're called to carry the truth. Let's say that you struggle with being faithful, being loyal, being trustworthy. You are destined for faithful living, my friend. Maybe you struggle with coveting, envy, materialism. You are assigned to be a great giver in Jesus' name. Oftentimes, a person's destiny is hidden in the wounds and afflictions that they've endured. God's resurrection power brings beauty out of the ashes and scorched earth. God has a powerful call on your life. He wants to make you royalty and give your life power and authority so that you can be a blessing to others. I know I've been several of these people. I've been lost, broken, fractured, fearful, struggling. God started his work on the inside of me. He changed, transformed my inner reality first. God began doing a work of uniting my heart. Fracture by fracture, I surrendered it to him. To the degree I'd trust in him with a fracture in my life, he'd faithfully heal, he'd repair, and he'd restore. If I didn't trust him with a room in my heart, in that area, I remained disconnected, de-unified. What do you want, my friend? You can do this slowly or quickly. You can have it all or just a little. What do you want? God will not go past your willingness to trust or surrender. Judas died fractured and stuck in his lust for money and position. He wouldn't let Jesus help him. Let God help you right now. Let God cover you, protect you. Bring out your real value. You might be thinking right now, Pastor Stephen, I, I'm one of those people that's just falling apart on the inside. I, I do the best I can do to, to look like I'm together on the outside, but inside I'm disconnected, unhooked. I, I can feel it. I just, I'm not working properly. If that's you, 
I want you to know that no matter how hopeless or desperate you feel, God is smiling on you right now and he wants you to know that he loves you. God the Father can repair all those broken and disconnected parts of your soul. Oh, he knows your design. He's got the blueprints. He's got the schematics, the details for your design and he knows exactly how to put you back together better than ever. He's the expert heart healer. Jesus asked this in Matthew 16, verse 26. What profit is it for a person to gain the whole world but lose their soul? Gaining the world cannot, it will not, make up for a broken, disconnected heart, a disconnected soul. So what can you do right now to fix this? Give your brokenness to Jesus. Jesus came to earth to suffer brokenness for you and me so that we could have legal right to being made whole on the inside, to being united in our hearts and working according to God's manufacturer standard. God, give God the glory. Praise God. Give God the glory. Pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I need you to unite my heart. Say that. I need you to unite my heart. You suffered on the cross for me. You were broken and died for me. God resurrected you. I believe that truth. Forgive me of all my sins. I repent. Heal my disconnections. Search me, dear Lord. Please repair anything out of order. I give you all of my life. You are my Lord and Savior. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.